Let's talk about getting data from an Esri server using QGIS. So for example, I have this page that um, uses an Esri server to show its data. Um, you can tell this by looking somewhere on the map. It probably says powered by Esri or something along those lines. And you can see when we turn on some of these layers, that data is shown. Um, but say the site doesn't give you a way to download those layers, we're going to talk about how to get those layers and um, load them in QGIS. So um, while we're here at the site, let's open the developer tools. I'm using Chrome. So I go to this menu, more tools and developer tools. And then in the network tab, I'm going to open the page again. So I'm going to reload the page. And you should see a bunch of stuff coming through here. You're probably on the all tab of the network tab, and that shows you all of the requests coming through for this page. It's kind of a lot to look at. So in order to look at just the data coming through, I'm going to look at XHR. So this is data that's loaded by the page. And um, in this case, we, we see a bunch of um, requests here that start with Q query question mark. And in this case, those are queries to an Esri server. And what I'm going to do is open this, any of those in a new tab. And I'm going to find map server in the URL and delete everything after it. So I'll just go like this. And I'll hit enter and go to that page. And what you should see is a page that looks something like this. It's going to be like ArcGIS REST services directory. It's going to depend on the data source that you're looking at, exactly the details that you see here. But in this case, um, the most important part is going to be the layers. We're going to use these layers later on in QGIS to open particular parts of the database. Okay, so now we're going to go over to QGIS and we need to install a new plugin. And so we go up to plugins, manage and install plugins. And search for Arc. GIS, and you may or may not see ArcGIS REST API container. If you don't see it, that's because it's experimental, and you need to enable experimental plugins. And to do that, you go over to Settings, and check this box. Show also experimental plugins. Okay. So once you install that, it will show up under Vector, under the Vector menu, Add ArcGIS Feature Service Layer. And I click on that, and this layer URL is what we're going to go back to Chrome and use this URL for. So we're going to copy and paste that in, and after the last slash after map server, we're going to put a number for one of these numbers of layers. So I'll start with, um, we can try zero and see how that goes. So I type zero and then I hit the tab key on my keyboard and that loads the, ter the layer name. Um, so that's one quick way of telling that it at least is working to a certain extent. Um, and then we'll click connect. Okay, so in this case, it says the layer has no features. So um, so that one's probably not going to work too well. Let's try number seven, the national parks. So go back to vector, add ArcGIS feature service layer, paste in our URL, seven, hit tab, and connect. And you see that it's working a little bit here. Okay, so it timed out. Um, that's going to happen sometimes. 
Um, I'm going to just try a few others. Okay, so now that it has um, it's downloaded some data, it's going to ask us which projection it's in. And if we go back to the page, we should be able to find a spatial reference. In this case, it's 3857 pseudo Mercator. So um, in QGIS, either either you've recently used that, or you'll type in the filter box here 3857 and find it down here. And once you press OK, it should load that data. And I'm going to use Quick Map Services to prove that it worked. Yes, great. So you can see that it is in the part of the world that I expect it to be in. So it seems like it's working. And um, what's great about a layer that you've loaded this way, it's going to act exactly like a shapefile in QGIS. So it has an attribute table as you can see here, and if you right click on it and save as, you can save it out as a shapefile or however you want to save it. So you have the data locally, and you can change the projection and all of those things. Okay, so um, that's how you can load data into QGIS from an Esri server.